In the past years, OSA events have been held at the state capitol located in Salem. We're actually creating history today as we speak. This is the first time one of our lobby events is being hosted virtually. And with that being said, I wanna thank you all for taking the time to join us for this awesome event. <clears throat> Before we get started, I'd like to touch base on what exactly the Oregon Student Association is and what our purpose is as well. The Oregon Student Association, also known as OSA, is a statewide student-led advocacy and organizing nonprofit. OSA was established in 1975 to represent, serve, advocate, and organize and protect the collective interests of students in post-secondary education in Oregon. We represent over 80,000 students and work to make quality education more affordable and more accessible to all Oregonians. Each year, the Oregon Student Association works and devotes itself to legislative bills that are focused on improving the life, resources, and benefits for all college students across the state. We look forward to sharing our priorities with you in a few moments. The work that we do as an, as an organization is fundamental to help make college more accessible and affordable. Student power is not only built by students like yourselves, but with collaboration and coordination from outside of the student body. The Oregon Student Association is excited to introduce you all to some of the folks who help make the student voice echo statewide. Today, we have Representative Nose from District 42, Representative Neron from District 26, Senator Dembro from District 23, Representative McLean from District 29, and Representative Alonso Leon from District 22. In a moment, we will hear from them directly. The last half of the event will be an opportunity to ask questions to the legislators in breakout rooms. Leading up to the portion of the event, I encourage you all to write down any questions you wish to ask them. Now is the time to pick their brains and give us a little uh, deeper dive into the legislative process. A couple of notes for the event. We will be recording this audio, uploading this video to YouTube and posting it to our website as well as sharing it, to you, sharing it out to you all. And as always, please remember to keep yourself muted when not speaking. The chat is open for folks to share comments and questions. All right, with that being said, thanks again for joining us today. And I'm gonna pass it over to Kathy for the land acknowledgement. Okay, Salem is located on Kalapuya Alihi, the tra traditional indigenous homeland of the Kalapuya people. Following treaties between 1851 and 1855, Kalapuya people were dispossessed of their indigenous homeland by the United States government and forcefully removed to the Coast Reservation in Western Oregon. Today, descendants are citizens of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians of Oregon and continue to make important contributions in their communities across the land we now refer to as Oregon. We express our respect for all federally recognized tribal nations of Oregon. This includes the Burns Paiute tribe, the Confederated Tribes of the Coos, Lower Umpqua and Susla Indians, the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde Community of Oregon, the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians of Oregon, the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Indian Reservation, the Confederated Tribes of the Warm, of Warm Springs, the Coquo Indian Tribe, the Cow Creek Band of Umpqua, tribe of Indians and the Klamath tribes. We also express our respect for all other displaced indigenous people who now call Oregon home. And we thank you for allowing us to be guests on this land. Now I will pass it off to Emily. Thank you both so much for helping us begin our event. And I thank so much to the representatives and the senators who, has, um, who have been willing to join us today. We appreciate your dedication to students and we are so glad to have you all here with us. We would love to hear more about you all and the role you play in the legislature. Every legislator will have about two minutes to speak and there will be a timekeeper to keep us all on track with 10 seconds to spare. Um, and with that being said, I would love if Representative Nose could kick us off. All right, do I just start talking? I can't tell if I'm actually um, on or not. Am I good, Emily? You are good to go, Representative. Okay, so uh, my name is Rob Nose. I uh, use he, him, his pronouns. 
Um, I uh, got my start in the legislature in the 2015 session. I've worked a lot with the Oregon Student Association over the years. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I was the executive director of this fine group uh, from 1992 to 1996. I was the main legislative advocate during the 93 session and the 95 session. Uh, and it's been my privilege to work with um, student groups and student governments all across the state, uh, both in my terms in office, um, but also uh, before I served as a legislator, um, I'm on the Oregon Student Foundation. This group, student activism, is what got me started in politics uh, when I was a very young person growing up in Ohio. And then I moved to Oregon to be the director here. And I'm delighted to be here with you all. And I'm so glad that this organization is still kicking around after all these years. Thank you so much. We appreciate all that you have done and continue to do for our organization. Um, how about we go to Representative Neron next? Hello. I am Courtney Neuron. It's wonderful to be here with you all and see some familiar faces and some new faces. So I uh, wish we were in the same room, but excited to um, be here virtually with you all in this uh, inaugural virtual event. So I uh, am a former high school French and Spanish teacher and in 2018 was fired up for the Student Success Act and ran for office and came to the legislature and was able to um, be one of those voices on your behalf, um, making sure that we got some much needed um, investments in students and young people. And we do have work to do in higher ed uh, stabilization and funding still, but really glad we got the K-12 piece and um, so I am a mother of Lucy and Owen and um, really uh, focused on things that impact our youth. Um, I ask myself when I'm taking on legislation, um, is it sustainable? Is it equitable? Is it good for kids? Does it save lives? And um, really all of that guides me toward things like um, the committee assignments that I'm on. I'm on the education committee, serving as the vice chair for incredible chair Alonso Leon, who you'll hear from in just a moment and so thankful to support um, the her vision and I'm sure she'll tell you about um, her focus in a little bit but I'm right there behind her making sure that we have a successful session as much as we can this year. Um, I'm also on the early childhood committee and we'll be talking a lot about child care in that committee and how it supports our working families um, and um, and and the, the changes that we need to make to make sure that we um, that that's a sustainable sector um, not only for the families and uh, but also for the individuals who are working in that um, in that sector. Um, I'm also on the housing committee and definitely see the intersection between housing and um, the stability of our families and our students. Um, some of the things that I'll be focusing on this year are things like the student collaborative that I know many of you are involved with um, that's focusing on racial justice and equity. Um, I'm a member of the environmental caucus and the wildlife caucus. Um, I'm also taking on legislation that um, starts to look at um, a more trauma informed lens that can be applied to family courts. And, um, and also really interested in making sure that our schools continue to improve on safety, both emotional safety and, um, and daily safety. Uh, and in so many ways, not just when 911 needs to be called, but we know that schools typically or often for many students don't feel safe. So looking at that through school safety task force, as well as other pieces of legislation that can bolster the work that our educators do and that our students deserve and need. So happy to be here to hear from you all and to help amplify student voice because that's one of the values I have. I want to make sure that we hear you and that we work together with you. Um, so I want to thank you all for having this uh, today and uh, look forward to your questions and the breakout sessions. Thank you so much, Representative. We're so glad to have you here. Um, let me pass it now to Senator Dembro. Hey there, everyone. Uh, really happy to see you. I'm Michael Dembro. I represent uh, much of Northeast and Southeast Portland in the Senate. And <clears throat> I was uh, myself uh, a college faculty member 
for more than 30 years, uh, very active in our uh, faculty union, advocating for part-time faculty rights and you know a number of other access issues. That's kind of what, what uh, drove me to the legislature uh, to get better funding for higher ed and to make sure that, that um, barriers that students were facing were lowered. Uh, and I joined the house in 2009 was my first session. And um, I went on to chair the higher ed committee while I was in the house. It was very instrumental in uh, creating our new governance structures, which gave independent boards to the universities, created the higher ed, the higher ed coordinating commission, AKA the HEC. Um, you know, one of my priorities was making sure that students were represented on those boards um, in the university boards as voting members. Uh, and on the, uh, the HEC board, uh, at least as a non-voting member, but that is something we're gonna change this session. One of my priorities is to get the HEC, the student representative to be a voting member on that board. The student voice is incredibly important. Um, <clears throat> I moved over to the Senate uh, in 2013 and um, got uh, very involved in workforce issues and then environmental, climate action issues, uh, but now I'm back uh, chairing the Education Committee in the Senate and very eager to move things forward. I will say, you know, Emily asked us to think about issues that we've worked on that, you know, that really meant a lot to me uh, in the higher ed space. And, and what comes to mind immediately, I, I have to say, is the battles over tuition equity. Um, you know, tuition equity, uh, OSA has been such a great partner on that. It took like 10 years. Uh, I, you know, I still remember the, you know, the 09, the 11 session where, you know, the OSA legislative director basically moved on into my, my office and uh, would just spend the night on my couch, you know, virtually. And um, there was a real battle, but we did ultimately prevail. It shows that if you keep at it, you will get there. We got tuition equity in 2013. We then did tuition equity 2.0, which extended uh, the Oregon Opportunity Grant uh, to uh, undocumented students, uh, and then went on to tuition equity 3.0, which extended it to graduate students. Uh, this session, we're actually looking at uh, providing in-state tuition to our COFA students. Uh, those students from the Pacific Islands, and I'm very optimistic about that. I will say, um, you know, two priority areas uh, that I'm, you know, well, one that I'm working very closely with the OSA, with Emily in particular on, is moving us finally to a common course numbering system for our lower division uh, um, courses, uh, so that students can be assured that the course that they take, whether it's uh, you know in a community college uh, or in high school, if it's dual credit, it is it's the same course. It, it has the same number. It's the same course. Just getting rid of those transfer issues that too often get in the way of students. And I'll say one final thing that's a real priority for me. It's become more and more of a priority is improving the access of incarcerated Oregonians uh, to good training and education. And uh, that is something that I think is really important that uh, we create real pathways for people while they're on the inside so that when they exit the system, when they've paid their dues, they have a future ahead of them. So. Anyway, uh, thank you for inviting me. I look forward to uh, this small group to, uh, to have some back and forth. Awesome, thank you so much, Senator. And also for really eloquently being able to um, go over what you've been working on, especially as it relates to students. We always appreciate your work. Um, and now I give the floor to Representative McLean. Thank you, Emily. And I really and truly, after listening to my peers, I could just say ditto on so many of the, um, the items that they brought up that I'm proud of or have worked on before. But as you know, I'm a 42 year old, uh, not old, but a 42 year veteran of teaching in high school. 
And also uh, my experience with OSA has been strong and long uh, because my daughter was there for those tuition equity first years. So it was, I got to hear about it every night that she called and every weekend she came home and was so proud that I was there for, um, as you say, 2.0 and 3.0. But that is one that I really, really care about. And really and truly my support, uh, especially at the college level and the community college level has been around uh, support systems. I'm ecstatic about being a sponsor on the navigation and navigator bill. And I think that that is one that is really important and one that I'm looking forward to helping get over the finish line this year. The part-time faculty uh, healthcare that both Senator Denver and I've worked on over the years, uh, I think we're close and we're gonna make this the year that we get a couple of these things over finally, right? And so we're trying strongly to build a lot of energy and we really wanna thank Representative Alonzo Leon uh, for the hearing that we had the other day. I think it, there was a lot of energy. There was a lot of, of real understanding of how the uh, part-time faculty is important to the students and important to our colleges and our community colleges and that they simply are not getting the essentials that they need to um, do their job well and take care of themselves. And so I, I think that's something that we hopefully will get over the line this year. I wanna say that the Student Success Act and uh, trying to have this seamless system of zero to 24 as far as support by the state is extremely important. I know that we're gonna work on the current service level being met uh, for our universities and our colleges. And I know right now it's pretty flat, but uh, we're work working on trying to make sure that that is going to continue to build and, and we're gonna continue to support that the best we can. Uh, I would I end with simply that, you know, as a mom and as a grandmother and as a person who has been a speech and debate coach for 47 years, that uh, young people and all of your energy and your excitement and your good ideas are important to me. And I look forward to the small group activities that we're going to do today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Representative McLean. And last but not least, Representative Alonzo Leon. Buenas tardes, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so happy to be here um, along with my amazing colleagues, uh, uh, kicking butt and taking names. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Teresa Alonso Leon. I represent District 22, Woodburn through the north part of Salem. I am, um, I believe, the first indigenous uh, Latina immigrant um, legislator in the history of our state. Um, that means that um, as an immigrant, I don't have historical context. I don't have family to refer uh, a political history to. So this is this is me coming into uh, becoming a legislator um, from a completely different lens, um, which has been very exciting. I've been very fortunate to have colleagues who have um, walked me helped me, um, cried with me. <laughs> um, ah, I get emotional because it's been an extraordinary journey. I never in a million years thought that um, when I came here as a four-year-old, um, the daughter, the oldest daughter of um, two amazing people who I call my heroes, who um, had the courage to leave our home country and start a new life in a different country without knowing English or understood the culture or knew what was going to happen. But they that but that love they had for us brought us here because they knew that coming here meant we would have opportunity, we would have a chance to not just survive but thrive. And while we struggled a lot um, in my early childhood years, um, one foundational piece that really stuck with me was just how much my teachers made an impact and how much they helped my parents understand that 
education was going to be the thing that was going to be the change agent in my life. And because of that, um, that seed that got planted in me about going on to post-secondary, going to college, that um, just grew and grew. And when I got to high school, I um, was an athlete. I was very involved in, in extracurricular activities. But my need and want to go to college just grew at so much that I transferred schools because I didn't, I, I got burned out. Um, and uh, because I wanted to graduate so quickly uh, that I took those past packets and, and, and worked really hard to try to finish my credit so I can graduate. Um, but transferring to a different school helped my, um, helped me learn about other opportunities. So I found out that, that um, if I earned my GED, that I could start college that much faster. And my school counselor found a program at U of O and I applied, it was full ride scholarship for me to go through that program. And, and so within months, I completed my GED, started um, Lane Community College, that took me on my uh, academic uh, pathway. I became the first person in my family to earn a multiple college degrees and um, the first person in my family really to, um, uh, to leave uh, the state <laughs> um, and participate in national leadership programs that exposed me to all kinds of opportunities. But I have to say that running for office was not the thing that was ever in my sphere. Um, this opportunity came to me because people in my community believed in my leadership. And I was, um, I, I, that, I ended up uh, becoming um, the third Latina city councilwoman in Woodburn um, where we're majority Latinos. And three years later, um, community leaders approached me about running for office. I did not know what that meant, but I what I didn't know was that I needed to raise half a million dollars for my campaign. And um, and I knew the platform that I was going to run on that was education because that was fundamental to me. It's what changed my life. It's what I know impacts so many families. And, um, and certainly there was, there was other platforms, but for me, that was instrumental. And so I always tell my story about why I chose to earn a GED as opposed to getting a high school diploma was because there's so many students who have so many different circum circumstances and the fact that we have opportunities for them, um, it's just so important to highlight. Um, I am now the chair of the education committee, which is one of the aspirations I had aimed for, which again, um, you know, I made history by becoming the first Latina indigenous uh, immigrant to chair a, uh, a committee and um, especially the education committee that I'm so passionate about. And one of the things, well, several things actually, um, that I'm really proud of um, in bringing my lens and my experience, having worked in, in K-12 uh, middle or K-12 um, and community college and university level, is that um, you know we need we need to work on policies that focus on this on the student, the focus on um, equity, racial and social justice. And frankly, um, we need to envision, and this is, my, this is my goal that I want you guys to know, is that I want our students to never think about that if they could go to college, but when they, go to, they can go to college. And that our work as legislators is to remove all of those barriers that keep our students from thinking about that difference, that if and the when. And I want all of our students to think about when. And so, um, so chairing this committee allows me to take a look at all those policies that come our way and be selective and choosing the policies that meet that framework that I've just described. 
And um, one of the policies that I'm so, so proud um, to share with you guys that you hopefully have already heard is my student voice bill. I want to work with our students in helping transform post-secondary education. I need your help. I need you to tell me what is your dream university or post-secondary experience? What does that look like? And what do we need to do to achieve it? And, and how can we ensure that 100% or 99.9% .9 of our students um, are graduating at the same level and that there isn't that huge gap that exists right now? So I'm just really proud to be here with you all. And, um, and I want us to go on this journey of transforming post-secondary because it's time. Thank you. <laughs> wow, thank you so much, Representative Alonzo Leon. Being able to work alongside of you um, on some of these bills have been absolutely incredible and I thank you. And I know students so deeply appreciate your work. Um, so wonderful. That was awesome to hear from all of you. And I can't wait to continue on in this event. Um, I'll keep it short because I'm really excited to be able to have the students share the priorities that actually they've been working alongside a lot of these legislators that are in the room today. And so with that being said, students have been working on um, these priorities for probably about a year and a half now. And so the fact that they're coming into fruition and not only that, but being able to tag along and work across the state together, um, it's really awesome to be able to witness. And so I'm gonna pass it off to our first student speaker, Liz. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Um, so this session, students have two legislative priorities regarding fees. The first is House Bill 3012, which strengthens and clarifies the existing process within statute for students to decide usage of the student incidental fee. Um, this fee is a transparent process, which gives students the right to decide how student fee money is allocated. Um, this already exists in law as a concept of student fee autonomy, but and students know that what students want, students know what students want and uh, what their needs are, and that's why this bill is so crucial. Um, it ensures um, that students maintain a voice um, in this vital process. Uh, the second bill is House Bill 2542, which um, creates uh, transparency around usage of all the mandatory fees students pay. It ensures students are informed by their institution of all the fees that they will have to pay, the amounts and where that money goes. In addition, this bill would require each institution to report to the Higher Education Coordinate, Coordinating Commission at the end of each academic year, sharing out a breakdown on how the fees were used on their campus for the academic year. Um, this, again, ensures transparency and accountability on how student fee revenue is allocated. Um, and with that, I'll pass it to Odalis to share some of our other priorities. Thanks, Liz. Um, and it, I'm going to share a stat that's kind of um, unfortunate. So in 2019, 63% of community college students in Oregon reported having uh, basic needs such as housing and food insecurity that were not being met. Um, so HB 20 or 2835 creates a, um, a funding position on each campus to help navigate SNAP, STEP, and other basic need sources. Um, this will help students and help more bring uh, help bring more federal support into Oregon as well. Um, this is a pilot program at OSU over the last two years, um, and it's demonstrated significant um, return on investment for this position. So it's been crucial, um, and we've seen it. Um, the next bill is the Student Voice Bill, or HB 2590, as Representative Alonso Leon mentioned. Um, this basically creates a task force to tour, to tour all public universities um, in all four corners of Oregon and find out from students, faculty, and staff um, what's working and what's not working, um, as rep the representative mentioned, and how we can ensure um, better student success outcomes for students and particularly underrepresented students. Um, and with that, I'll pass it over to Maya. Thank you, Adelis. Um, So right now, students get informed last minute about textbook costs and it disrupts their education. In a 2018 survey of Oregon students, 40% of college students and 23% of university students report taking fewer courses due to textbook costs. And more alarmingly, 18% of college students and 28% of university students earned a poorer grade because they could not afford their course materials. So how House Bill 2919 would require 75% of professors on campus to publish the cost of their course materials for classes prior to registration. This would help students plan financially and push professors to offer more affordable textbook options like OER. Now we will shift into discussing the Oregon 
Michigan Student Association's budget priorities for this session. I'll pass it to you, NJ. Thank you very much, Maya. So uh, OSA's top budget priority is funding the Oregon Opportunity Grant at $290 million. This would ensure that every student with a household income of 100,000 or less would be able to have access to the Oregon Opportunity Grant. Without this, we don't think that Oregon can successfully recover from the economic downturn due to COVID-19. Our second priority is matching the OCCA, Oregon's Col uh, Community College Association's ask for $702 million for our community colleges in order to provide an important piece of our economic and educational stability for our lowest income and most underrepresented students. And our final budget ask is that universities do need $900 million in order to succeed and keep tuition increases low. But we hear your concerns about the oversight and governance and spending of our universities. And so we need to work with you in order to create a more accountable system that can hold our universities and board of trustees accountable. Thank you very much. And I'll pass it to Jarrell to explain the rest. Excellent. Thank you so much, NJ. <clears throat> Hello. Thank you all for sharing out the priorities for us. Um, we are so excited to be pushing these bills through uh, this session, and we could not do it without students like yourselves working together to further student power and autonomy in Oregon. Well, now that we have covered these priorities, we will be moving into the breakout rooms for the last section of this event. These breakout rooms are an opportunity for students to ask legislatures questions about their experience and work in the legislature and for legislators to hear more from students and to discuss the legislative uh, session as a whole. We hope that you'll all be able to capitalize on this time. And this is a great opportunity to dive deeper into the work that is currently being done statewide. So with all that being said, uh, we will begin putting folks into said breakout rooms. Uh, are going to share out a couple of awesome upcoming events. If you were interested in this and you were excited to learn a little bit more about the legislative process, um, I really would encourage you to one, keep updated by signing up in this link. It's our newsletter and that's where we have our legislative updates, upcoming involvement opportunities, some um, events of course now are zoom but hopefully as um, the pandemic slows um, and we're able to get the vaccination out um, we're able to have in-person events and so that you can find all of that on our weekly newsletter um, thank you ivan for dropping that in the chat and my next one is wanting to share um, some of the bills that the students were able to share with you all um, they're really, they're up for public hearings. And so two of the bills that are up next Thursday or this coming Thursday on February 25th is the mandatory fee transparency bill as well as the student voice bill. And so um, the links that are gonna be put in the chat now is an opportunity for you to fill out a brief Google form about how you experience mandatory fees. Some of those fees that you don't really understand why you're charged or the amount and you're concerned about that and your experience on your campus, campus with that. And then of course, Representative Alonzo Leon shared a lot about her priority of the student voice bill, um, which is wonderful. And that is coming up on the March 4th. And so really encourage you to fill that Google form out as well and being able to have your voice heard. These will be able to go on the public record. And so we're gonna be able to look back on that, not just this year, but in years to come. So if you feel willing and ready to share your story, uh, we would love to hear it. And then, um, oh, actually, I'm gonna take a minute. I was getting a little rushed. We're gonna take like one or two minutes, listen to some music. You can fill that out if you would like to, and then we'll be um, back in a minute or two. Thanks.
variety. Hopefully y'all were able to um, fill out some of those or at least started filling them out. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna share that on April 6th, OSA is gonna have our statewide lobby day. And while we would prefer seeing all of you at the Capitol in person, um, we are really excited and ready to have this virtual session and to make sure that the student voice is heard. Um, this is going to look like students um, being put into groups and then during April 6, about four, having about four meetings with legislators, some um, that are here today with us and some new ones that maybe you haven't met before. And so I think that is going to be pretty awesome. Ivan dropped the lobby day chat or lobby day uh, registration form in there and we would love for you to fill out. It'll take like 20 seconds. Um, and I think we're gonna give like 30 seconds for this to play a little music and have you fill it out and we'll come back. Actually, you know what? No, I'm just going on the fly right now. We have one minute left. So I would encourage you to fill that out. It will be quick. I also wanna encourage you that the legislators that came here, we're so thankful to have them here. Um, you can speak with them and access them outside of this event. And I had um, Odalis, um, thank you so much for putting uh, the legislative website in the chat. You can find them on this website and you can find their email. You can also find their phone number. And so call them, email them, share your story, ask them questions. And I know that they would um, love to hear from you. And with that, um, I'm so thankful for this event and for everyone being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and just please have a good, safe weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks all, take care.